Thank you, Kimball, for asking your grandma and grandpa to be at your baptism day. Via modern technology, we can do that. We can record it here in our mission in Hong Kong and send it to you there for your baptism in New York. Now, you asked us to talk about the sacrament today, so we want to do that. Now, the sacrament is a holy or priest ordinance that helps remind us of the Savior's atonement. The bread and the water remind us of Jesus' flesh and blood, which he gave as a sacrifice for us. Today, you'll be making covenants at your baptism. Then, next Sunday, as you partake of the sacrament, you'll renew those covenants with Heavenly Father. The first sacrament was given by Jesus when he called his apostles together in the upper room. And he was concerned because he would soon leave them. He wanted to have, give them a way they could remember him and what he would do for them and for all of us before he performed the atonement. So he introduced the sacrament to them. He took some bread, broke it into pieces, and then passed it to them and said, Take, eat, this is in remembrance of my body, which I give for a ransom for you. Then he took the cup, and he blessed it, and he passed it, and told his apostles to drink. And he said, This is in remembrance of my blood, which is shed for as many as shall believe in my name for the remission of their sins. Ever since that day, Christians have gotten together and have had the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, or the sacrament as we call it. Every Sunday we have the opportunity of coming together and having the bread and the water to help us remember Jesus Christ and remember our covenants. I love the sacrament. I love to watch the priest as he blesses the bread or the cup and, and breaks the bread and passes it to uh, the deacons and the teachers. It reminds me of Jesus Christ at the very first sacrament when he did the same thing and he blessed the bread and, and broke it and gave it to the apostles. It helps me think of being right there with Jesus. I love to watch the deacons and the teachers as they pass the bread or pass the cup to all of us in the congregation. And I can imagine being there that first time when Jesus uh, was with his apostles and how they passed the bread and the cup to each other. In that sense, the priest stands in the place of Jesus and represents Jesus Christ at the sacrament. And the deacons and the teachers represent the apostles. And it really helps me to feel uh, really close to my Savior, Jesus Christ. I know that taking the sacrament is very sacred. Sometimes on Saturday nights or Sunday mornings, in my prayers, I will think about well, how I did in the past week. And if I remember Jesus and if I kept his commandments, I try to think about how maybe I could have done better, and I repent of my sins. It's a good time for me to repent and to think about Jesus and to prepare myself so that when I come on Sundays to receive the sacrament, I can promise again to remember him better. Kim, with your baptism today, you witnessed that you are willing to take upon yourself the name of Jesus Christ. And you'll renew that when you partake of the sacrament each Sunday. By this, you're, willing to sh you're showing to your Heavenly Father and to Jesus that you're willing to follow Him and to, always, to serve Him and to serve others. You also covenant to remember Jesus in all your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. They'll be influenced by the gospel that He teaches. You also promise to keep His commandments, which you'll learn more about from your parents as you grow older. These are the same promises that Grandma and Grandpa made when we were baptized. And then each Sabbath day, as we go to church and we partake of the sacrament, we renew those same covenants. Jesus said that before the, we partake of the sacrament, we should repent of our sins. Then we'll gain a remission of our sins. And we'll always have His Holy Spirit to be with us. I testify that the Holy Spirit will guide you and direct you, and you'll have the knowledge, faith, power, and righteousness to return to live with your Heavenly Father. I am especially grateful for the promise that I might have His Spirit to be with me. I did not join the church when I was eight years old, like you're doing. I was looking for different churches and trying to find something that I read about in the Bible that God had promised to all of us. He promised that we could receive the gift of the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands by one that had authority. I was 13 or 14 years old and went to different churches and I prayed to Heavenly Father that I would be able to find this gift. 
but the churches that I went to didn't know what I was talking about. But then the missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints came and they taught me about baptism and about receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. I was so grateful that Heavenly Father had led me to what I was looking for. I love the Holy Ghost. I'm grateful that when I repent and I receive the sacrament, I can have His Spirit to be with me, to teach me and to guide me. Elder Neal A. Maxwell of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles frequently spoke about the Holy Ghost. And he called the Holy Ghost the tender tutor. Tender meaning gentle, kind, and patient. Tutor meaning a private teacher, one that teaches us one-on-one. -on -one. I like that phrase, a tender tutor. And I know that, Kimball, as you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost today, that the Holy Ghost will be a tender tutor to you to help you uh, repent of your sins and become more and more like our Savior Jesus Christ. Kimball, we testify to you that the gift of the Holy Ghost is a sacred blessing and a sacred gift from our Heavenly Father, that he will help you become like Jesus Christ and be able to return to live with him and with Heavenly Father. And we testify of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.